Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. I'm, uh, oh, by the way, you've only got two days left to f- enter this competition uh, that is revealed on Christmas Day. Uh, the, uh, whatever it is, you can win a um, thingamajig by doing uh, what's the name? So enter it if you want to be the lucky, uh, lucky fellow, person, human, to do that. So, oh, I've really sold that, haven't I? Uh. Uh. I just got up. See, I make these recordings whenever I can... Not fit the men, but you know, just uh, see. Normally, I I do them in the middle of the night. Kind of. Well, I say middle of the night. I mean, you know, probably about three, four in the morning two in the morning you know it's those kind of times when it's quietest in the world where everybody except me and one farting snail are still awake but today or earlier today this morning I was still awake, but I was busy, so I didn't end up making a recording. So I went to bed about half five ish. I actually, maybe later than that, I woke it up just now after yet again the same. The same dream. It's weird. Uh, I used to make recordings. Oh, I did, honest. I did. I used to make recordings. I still do. But I used to make recordings back in some year. 2012 something like that and maybe 2013 maybe two yeah 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 I think so and I used to make a recording whenever I got out of bed you know first thing in the morning and it used to be quite strange there used to be quite strange recordings because I would talk about my dreams not as in aspirations and you know Wishes for my well being for the future and various uh, items I'd like to collect during my adventure on this planet, but more dreams as in whilst sleeping and. 
They got a bit weird. Because I used to be quite... I don't use the word explicit. I think just the word honest. <laughs> I think that's, that's probably a better word. Oh, that was explicit. You've, you've given me all these details. Yeah, I'm just being honest about the dream. I'm not... I'm not dampening it down to suit your sensibilities. I don't want to make you blush. Ooh. Can't believe you said that word. Oh, you said a naughty word. Yes, because I was talking about a naughty event. Which isn't really naughty, because if it was naughty, then the whole of humanity throughout the human race would be naughty, haven't they? Yes, otherwise we'd have... So yeah. So some of those recordings are a bit strange. I got this reoccurring dream, and there's a few different dreams I have, and but there's this reoccurring dream. And basically it evolves around two, three, well actually it evolves around rooms, it evolves around rooms moving into places, something which I've done a lot of over my Years. And it's not really just my adult years either. Really, because when I was. How old was I? When I was. 15. I was sleeping on a camper bed in my stepmum's. My stepmum's mother's living room so officially I was homeless you know sleeping in someone's living room basically sofa surfing at that point so I was there and I moved backwards and forwards a couple of times back to my dad's like the family home but he refused to put the heating on <laughs> so it was freezing cold and there was no food or anything you know because I was only 15 and I needed to eat and I wasn't yeah I didn't have money to sort of buy buy my own food or anything so because I was still yeah I was still officially at school Yeah. That's it. Cause basically, I'd left school, but I was still at school. You know, I'd just come to the point where I could leave, but I had to go back f- to do my exams. And I got a job in a chip shop. Yeah. I dream about that as well. I had the strangest dream about the chip shop the other day. That was actually yesterday. Uh, Anyway. And... I... Yeah, I moved around a lot when I was... From 15, then I I moved into the flat above the chip shop at age 16 in April. Or it was Easter anyway, so it was either the end of March or April. I remember because I had uh, hot cross buns on Good Friday, which was the only time I ever had hot cross buns. Now I have them every day. Well, tea cakes. Because 
I can and I'm just it's just a groovy thing to do but back then you know the tradition was hot crossed buns tea cakes just with a cross on top but extra kind of sugary and uh, more fruit hopefully because tea cakes don't have enough fruit in them I don't want it to be I don't want it to be there's, there's a fine line there's a fine line between a tea cake and a fruit cake you know I don't want it to be so full of fruit that I feel like I've had my uh, one a day fruit you know that I perhaps need to cut down on the rest of my food in case I overdose on a fruit I don't I don't want it to get you know too many currants and prunes mind you prunes isn't so bad is it because it's quite good there's lots of things that are quite good for that but um, what am I thinking about cucumbers no I so I moved around a lot and because I remember my friend Neil came round on that day I think it was Good Friday as I said unless I waited till Easter day to have them but no Good Friday because the shop was closed downstairs was closed Good Friday opened up again Saturday closed Sunday you know which it would anyway so the Good Friday was just the only day that we kind of normally had off that we'd normally work and I had that off and he would have had his day off because he was working on the docks and because he'd left school we were both sick he was 16 long before me and he was I think he's couriering um, on a little moped driving around I think I might be wrong no he wasn't no he wasn't he was going to college that's right he was sure he was going to college doing catering I think I might be wrong I don't know um, oh, I don't know he might have said something about it but I might not have listened so I moved around a lot so from that place I then moved where did I move um, uh, oh, I stayed at my dad's for a little while and then only for a short period so I was there and I got a job in the co-op uh, supermarket it's only, a, it's only a tiny little shop really but it was a co-op and I, and I worked and that wasn't too far away from where my dad lived so I stayed with him in his new house and then I moved out of there and I lived above oh this is a habit isn't it I lived above the co-op which was yeah there was a, a flat and the manager lived above the flat above the co-op in a flat it's a nice flat so I lived up there with her I moved in as a lodger because it's just, I've always been lazy well ironically I used to get to late worker get to late worker I used to get late to <laughs> I used to get to late worker than I did when I was um, dad's at my living I couldn't believe it so I'd end up getting there later than before when I lived further away. It's like, what on earth? 
which is exactly what she said. She said to me, oh, this is the manager. And what on earth? How come you get so late? Why are you so late? I said, well, you were late too. She said, no, I wasn't. I said, yeah, you were. I saw you. She said, how'd you see me? Well, two reasons, but first one's rude, but the second one is we live together. We left at the same time. I mean, it was quite nice because we'd be sitting there probably watching, I don't know, morning telly. So we'd have to be there fairly early in the morning. Not early, early, but I'm sure I had to be there by about 8.30, maybe 8. And we'd be, it'd be, oh, we've, we've got 30 seconds to get to work. Yeah, my, well, I might as well set off. <laughs> and it would take probably 10 seconds. This is a case of just walking down some steps, some stairs. would be there and then she left for well she yeah she left the shop the, the job which meant she got evicted which meant I got evicted from the uh, the place I also left the job as well Because after she left, it was it went a bit horrible, uh, and the new manager kept moaning about the motorbike being outside. I got this bottle of water; it keeps cracking. Stop it! So there's this, yeah, I had this motorbike, and this bloke sold it to me. I couldn't drive, I couldn't ride a motorbike, I wasn't old enough to ride that type of motorbike and the bike was so heavy I wouldn't have been able to physically been able to manage it anyway. It was a huge, huge thing. It was like if you think you know, in chips, the T V show or the movie if you've watched the movie, the uh, that kind of motorcycle yeah, it's nothing like that. Um, it's, but it's probably that kind of heaviness. Probably not actually, but it was very heavy. You know, I couldn't lift it. Um, so yeah, I ended up. I bought it. I don't know why. I just, I just did. I probably spent I don't know how much I spent on it and then I I left it outside the shop because I lived there I mean what am I going to do stick it the other side of town you know I'm going to put it where I live aren't I uh, so it was a bit of an eyesore people say that though but I didn't notice anyone saying oh my eyes are sore when you're rubbing their eyes as they walk past it. You know, it wasn't really an eyesore, it was just a motorbike. In fact, some people used to sit on it and like play, like play with themselves, not with themselves, but play with, play on the bike, you know what I mean? Like it's a, a, like an arcade game or something. And I could have made some money out of that. People used to get their kids, put them on and take a photograph of themselves. We seem a bit weird. Put your kid on a bike and then take a photograph of yourself while the kid's on a bike out of the way. How weird. So selfies aren't just a mobile phone thing. We've been taking selfies for years. I always have. So I don't know about you, but whenever I go through with my nan she had these boxes and boxes and boxes of 
photograph albums, plus lots of like uh, photographs as well. That I'm not saying the photograph albums were empty; they were full. But there's also like loose photographs, not loose and like trying to get away and all like loose as in you know just giving it to anyone. Gone. They weren't that that kind of they weren't conspicuous um, <laughs> um uh, they were they weren't selling themselves that's, that's what I'm, I'm they were just photographs they were just in a um in a box but big boxes quite a few quite a few big boxes and they really was a lot of them there was thousands and thousands I mean she was she was about 600 years old so you know there was a lot of photographs and she sneezed dust that's how old she was and she um, I used to look through the photo albums and it's really, really, I don't know if this is like normal for everyone, but the only time I got a slight tinkle, slight little, ooh, is when I saw a picture of me. I just, I, I wanted to see pictures of me. Of, you know, when I was a kid. Because the only pictures of me was from the age that I ever saw before that really was the age of, seven onwards but the years before that there was there's no pictures and my nan did have not only pictures of me from the age of seven onwards because yeah she didn't have that many but there's a few but she also had some pictures of me as a baby not many but a few so all the pictures between the age of 7 and 15 let's say have gone that whole period of me living with my brothers with the parents gone they just I don't know who has them or if they've been destroyed and It, you know, so I haven't seen any pictures of me and my brothers generally as a from the ages of seven onwards, apart from the odd one that my nan had. Uh, so I got excited. I used to get like not excited, excited. I mean, I wasn't. You know, what I mean, it was just normal excitement, the, the friendly kind, and I. really just I don't know what happened I don't know what happened to those photographs I'm not even sure why I'm talking about photographs but yeah so I, um, when I moved out from that place I was evicted from that flat along with the lady that was renting it originally but because I was lodging there I was also evicted so that was my first eviction how many times have I been evicted let's have a think about it so I'm going to class these as official evictions as well as people just saying get out <laughs> I want you out um, which is an eviction that's an eviction when your landlady or landlord tells you they want you out I've had a few uh, official ones, you know, with letters and stuff as well. So the first eviction was the one above the... Then, there. That was an eviction. Um, so where's the next one? Uh, where did I go there? And there, so it's two, 
two places near the beach then I think I went back to my dad's for a while but then he asked me to leave and then uh, I moved into this lady's place which was someone that I, she was a friend my mother my friend's mother so I stayed with her for a while that's when I went to Spain for the half of the day and I'd already left I'd moved out so I went back for a little while and she I stayed with her for a bit you know another week or two so she that wasn't really an eviction that was just uh, an understanding of I don't want you living here anymore <laughs> it's um, but then she did want me to move out so she used to moan that I was having a bath it's not really the way turn, things turn around so he used to moan because cause I had a job with different shift patterns sometimes I'd have to be at work at six and she'd moan if I had a bath before going to work and now all these years later people moan for the opposite reason they said well can you please have a bath Jason please please that's that's like all the, the local neighbours that's people in other roads people in just you know there's people like a mile away coming knocking on my door so please Jason have a bath the smell's just too much so what other ones uh, I had so I left there so it wasn't really an eviction it was but it wasn't you know it was just so I'll, I'll ignore that one where else did I move what other evictions I don't think it was any for quite a while I basically just moved on from places so I didn't actually yeah I wonder if there was any there just thinking about the different places if there if there moved moved if there if there can you hear that don't know how loud that is for you That's why I don't make these recordings during the day. I don't know why people like power tools. I do wonder if power tools are like Viagra for people. It's like the only thing that can get them stiff. Get them, get them, uh, the juices flowing. Nothing else works. Honey, get the drill. We've we've got, we've got shelving to put up. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to do that. Uh, it's boring. Don't worry, you'll be happy. I've done it. When I've done it, then I'm going to do something else that we haven't done for ages because, you know. floppy dick syndrome so I don't know if the um, floppy 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 I don't know if the yeah, person's going to continue doing that I don't want to 
want to stop recording because I'm halfway through unless I just make it a little bit shorter today I can probably edit out some of it I don't know so I moved let's have a look I moved again and again I moved again moved to London and I moved again then I moved back then I moved away from London stayed with my dad again then I moved out and moved into a studio place which I actually quite liked there's been a few, it's been a, only a very few like a few places that I've lived in that I've actually quite liked the the room or the build you know the the place and that was one of them because I had my own bathroom kitchen it was basically like a little holiday chalet thing not holiday chalet thing that's pretty wrong it's it was a building but they were holiday flats so I said it was studio so you'd sleep in the living room so the I'm not sure I think it was like a bed and you basically it was a bed there was a bed and there was a settee as well and there was a television and it was I liked it and but I didn't live there for too long and I ended up moving out of there so I couldn't pay the rent and I moved into another little room and yeah then I moved back to London I suppose I could close the windows <laughs> it's too oh well, that is so noisy well perhaps if I close the windows it would be less noise I'm going to do that now Ah, oh, okay, I've closed the windows. Oh, I just put the phone on mute or pause while I did that. Now they're banging. I mean, you know, you hear it. Oh dear. It's lucky I'm not allowed a gun onto a nice rifle. Anyway, I what other places? So I've got three so far that I was evicted from. The next eviction. Oh yeah, yeah, God. So I moved back to London. Then I was there for four years, I think. In this little room had mice. It's had to, it, oh. seriously. I I don't know why I put myself through it. All because I wanted to do comedy, and I could have had a, a stayed where I was, had a decent paid job, you know, okay pay, you know, um, enough to pay for somewhere nice to live once I kind of got my act you know once I got myself together but I never really kind of uh, anyway I had I had this little room and there was a bathroom heater in the bedroom and that's the only thing no central heating and it was I think it was the oldest house in Europe I think it was it, our oldest house um, that still exists. It was uh, anyway. I lived there, and then I moved out of there, and then I moved into a place with my friend, 
and we all got evicted after about five weeks of me living there. So that's my fourth eviction. So I then moved in with a friend who saved us all by giving us somewhere to live. So I lived with him. Funny enough, Andre as well, because Andre um, was already living with him. So I went and stayed with, yeah, I, I moved in with him. And he got evicted. So I got evicted. So we both got evicted out of that house. And the, so then I went to live. I was literally homeless at that point. And and we knew the I knew the eviction was happening, so it was, luckily that that gave me a little bit of preparation time, but not enough preparation time to to do anything, to really couldn't find anywhere to live. So I ended up going to work at Butlin's holiday camp for the Christmas season because I needed somewhere to sleep. So that's what I did. Moved there, came back found somewhere else to live when I got back in January or whatever and what happened then I got The next time I got evicted was 2001. So it was a house I was living in for about four years. Got evicted from there. But that was all official. That was a letter with three months notice or two months notice and stuff. And then the next time I got evicted, so I moved from London. I moved from that place to a new place. And I moved from that place to closer to where my nan lived. So I lived there. Then I moved to a different place, different a different uh, studio place. Then another different studio place within the same kind of complex. And then I moved. moved to a caravan then I moved back then I moved to a room that I had no heating at all this is in 2004 how can you have, rent a room out of no heating it's a big room which probably made it worse because there was no heating uh, at least I had somewhere for my books and Then I moved from there to the Buddhist community and I moved from there when I started university. So the place, the university, uh, I had accommodation when I was at university and then I was there for three years living in that place and then I, I got an eviction letter and so that's the seventh eviction. So then I moved to, I think I was given two or three months notice, I don't know what it was. And that was, um, it's, been, it's very awkward when you, if you, because two of well it's, it's awkward in any eviction situation but two of those situations where I've received letters it's very formal but I was living in a family um, environment where I was living with the landlord and landlady not not like as a family necessarily I was you know renting a room and they would ever see them every day Found anywhere to live yet? Found anywhere to live yet? Like, 
You only gave me the letter two minutes ago. I've just been in the toilet, crying. <laughs> just And yeah, it's very, very awkward. Uh, but you know, I, I ended up, I got out in time and I pulled out in time and got found somewhere else. So I moved there, I moved. So yeah, so I moved out of there I had to put all my stuff in storage because I didn't couldn't find anywhere because my rent was so cheap and I was unemployed no no I wasn't unemployed I just started a new job and it was just yeah it was all a bit weird but um, I got help to sort of get that sorted so I moved to a new place then I moved out of there after a year because it was awful then I moved to another another place which had mould slugs in <laughs> seriously there was slugs in the place and the mould in the walls it was awful and then I moved here So yeah, seven evictions. Out of those seven evictions, uh, I suppose one, two, three, four, five were official, but not done officially, all of them. Two of them were done officially but back when I was younger, I don't know if there was laws, the same laws as there are now. So when I was working above the chip shop, they basically said, well, you've quit the job. You've got to quit the, you've got to get out of the flat as well. Now, if that was now, I could probably stay there for six months or three months. You know, I could stick in there and um, as long as I paid the rent, I'd be able to, you know, they couldn't kick me out for for quite a while but back then I just I just got out because I didn't know any any different with the one above the chip shop uh, the one above the co-op that was official because they got the bailiffs in <laughs> so we actually stayed right to the end because she refused to move out I didn't even realise we were being made, we were being kicked out, because she lost her job before I lost my job. Well, I I left. She lost her job, and I left, and she, that's why she gave me a room in order to have some money coming in because she didn't work for you know a couple of months, and I was there from probably about May till August, something like that. So yeah, there was all official and eventually we had a date and we had to get out by that date. So that was an official one as well. So So I've only had the official ones was that one the one where my friend was living with my friend he yeah he he's I had to get out of there and that was uh, an eviction and that was bailiffs And there was a two times with letters, which was official as well. So I've only had four official ones. Um, one of the other ones was when it was a sublet and I was staying with a friend and literally we were working at the same place. He came up to me during the break time. He said, yeah, we have to move out. I said, when? 
he said tonight <laughs> that was it I think it was a Tuesday it's really weird that I remember that it was a Tuesday he said yeah it's a sublet and the why didn't you just rent it somewhere proper then why did you rent a sublet but anyway that's what we ended up doing and it all worked out okay but So I have these dreams where, and I've got this place now, it took 30 years, but I've got this, and I don't know, it's, there's something, I keep having this dream, right, where, and it's a reoccurring dream, and I've got this... I have to get out of the where I'm living. So that's like a an experience that I've had quite a few times over the years. And I've found a place. But this place that I've got isn't um it's not self contained. It you know it's it's got other doors where people can walk through or there's uh, people can get and use the kitchen or use the bathroom and and then I go back to another place and which is a council place Andre's been a really good boy He's just gone to the toilet on the paper. I've just watched him. I think I know why he doesn't like going on the paper. Because his legs, his, his feet slide. They kind of slide open like he's doing his splits. He just looked at me. He just said, look, Daddy, I'm not a girl. I can't do his splits. I said, look... It's got nothing to do with being able to do the splits whether you're a girl or not. He said, I think it has. So I do want to argue with him. So, in this stream that I just had a little while ago, travelled down and I was back in the same town that I used to live and at one point during a dream I've got this big pink what's in my hand and I'm, it's a, a swan and it's and I'm pulling not pulling it along but it's kind of just walking along with me and I'm looking for to visit the flat. The proper flat is like I'm in this building, and it, I keep visiting it. So there's this this place that I'm renting, and then there's all these different people that, that can get into it. Like you know, this basically it's shared, but it only started off with one door. Because it was, I went, I remember when I first looked at it in the dream, and there was a, you know, it's a nice, uh, very big place. Uh, and then I looked around, so I've walked through to, you know, to find out where the bathroom was, find out where the bedroom was. And there was more and more bedrooms and more and more rooms. And I thought, oh, that's weird. And then I came in one day, again, this is in a dream, a different dream, and there was people sitting in there watching telly. I said, what are you doing? They said, we were watching telly. And we're sitting. Well, someone shouted out, and we're sitting. <laughs> and uh, I said, but this is my place. They, they said, no, it's, it's our place. 
and it kind of moved from there and but they had their own bedroom and their own bathroom and then they started using my bathroom and then it's kind of grown from there yesterday or you know tonight well before I, the dreams I had before I sort of woke up I was going through different parts of it of this flat of this apartment and there was about four different people living there and they were all moaning about the same thing that they thought it was a self-contained flat and why there are other people living there and I said look I'm in the same position because they wouldn't know who I was because I hadn't been there for ages because I'd been I don't know where I'd been been somewhere else and I was saying to them look I think you're real lovely I'd love to live with you all but unfortunately I don't want to and they said that sounds a bit rude but also seems to make sense I'm not sure I said look it's a dream it's not supposed to make you know complete sense they said fair enough and I said uh, yeah you know, something else happened but and I decided to look for go to back to my original council flat that I'd been given which would kind of be this but it wasn't it was a place in kind of like the YMCA which is where I used to live and oh man I went there and this is something that's happened lots of times as well in my dreams I've gone to this door and I've I just pushed it and it opened didn't have a key just pushed it and I couldn't remember the number because it had been so long since I'd been there so I pulled some letters out of the letterbox because they were piled up and it had my name on it so it must be me but the door was just completely rattled you know it wasn't it wasn't it was on the hinges but it wasn't closing properly and I thought I need to go down and get the maintenance to fix that which is a similar situation that has happened in previous dreams and I go in and I think that this flat now I remember it is kind of the same flat that I lived in when I was 15 when I was sleeping on this on the the bed under the living room floor on a little camper bed and then so I'm there thinking oh this is rubbish uh, I go into the kitchen yeah it's the same layout I just only just realised go into the kitchen and it's just all grubby and because I haven't been in there for ages and ages and ages and then I think oh, I have to contact the council because I've been living at two different places at the same time and how much rent do I owe on this place because I've not paid any rent I can't, you know, not pay, can't pay two lots of rent and then I remember that I have somewhere that I've got this place it literally is it's like that I remember that that I've got this home that I'm in now and I feel grateful and relieved and I wake up 
and I have different variations of that drink. It's not always, I don't always have a, a pink flamingo in my hand walking around and yeah it's kind of I mean there's one particular place it is that flat wow I never even realised it isn't it strange so I've been dreaming about that flat the the place that I lived in when I was 15 because I was kind of evicted from there as well because they moved away they, they moved uh, away so I needed to get out of there and find somewhere else to live but it wasn't so much an eviction as in you know because it was family they were just like we can't get out <laughs> we're moving so you can't stay here yeah wow I felt so grateful to have this place and I do I don't always you know but this is to have after all those years from 1986 to I moved in here in 2015 in April so 1986 to 2015 what's that 86 96 2006 2016 so it's 29 years of living in other people's houses as well as lived on people's floors, been homeless, sofa surfing, you know, moved over 40 times in that period, been evicted, what was it, seven times? So it took me all that time to get this place. I think it's because sometimes I think maybe do I deserve this I, you know I only got this because I was ill and you know that kind of stuff but actually I think I've served my time haven't I I think I've I've, I've paid my dues to get this because I could have been I never asked for help before I could have got help when I was in my teens they would have had to give me when I was 16 they would have had to give me the council would have had to give me somewhere to live maybe not my own flat but they would have housed me but I didn't even think about that So I'd have had my own flat, you know, 30 years ago probably, if I'd have kind of gone down the route that I perhaps should have gone down, but I didn't, I didn't think about um, benefits or housing or, you know, anything like that. I was, I just, just worked, I'd just go to work and that's it and you pay your rent and yeah I 
So I hope I was able to bore you with some actual, I don't normally share facts. Well, if it's, if it's facts, but it's stuff. And, yeah. And it's strange. Ever so strange. And now I've got this flat with big windows. I've got a punch bag. I've got a nice telly. It's not, it's not particularly big, but it's bigger than I've ever had before. Well, it's, I don't know if that's, that's not true, but it's, it's a, I think it's 36 inches. I mean, you wouldn't want that sticking in your ear, would you? Thirty-six inches, so it's it's a it's a it's a nice size. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Having a bit of gratitude for. But real gratitude, I think, actually, it's really could be really useful to really get in touch with reality. Like, actually, this is pretty good. But also to get in touch with the fact that you deserve these good things just as much as anybody else and just as the plane goes past I'm going to say goodbye tell you what it is it's a clear sky today and it's not raining for the first time in about two weeks. So, and it's two days before Christmas. It's the 23rd today of December. So there's going to be a lot of people about, including in the sky, Mr. Plain Man. So I'm going to go, thank you for listening. By the way, when I say plain man, I know it's a man because I've I found out who it is that does it. All year during the summer, he's flying and he's, he goes over this building continuously during the day. So there. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Boy, 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 boy.